Cheers guys, Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek. In this video I want to quickly talk about uh, a few ways to kind of broaden and expand you know your VR experience. In the previous video I kind of gave my impressions you know after having mucked around with the HTC 5 for a few weeks but there are ways to kind of expand right put it this way we've had to show a lot of patients waiting for content waiting for the actual units to, to get around to being built and shipped to us and then once they arrived it's kind of been a little lacking right in terms of content because AAA publishers they're not going to quickly make something for something that doesn't have a lot of market penetration so it's going to require some traction right well there are a couple of things you can do to kind of expand your experience and the first of those is a utility called Vorpex. Uh, Vorpex is a utility and I will have um, a link and a uh, link in my description below but Vorpex is a utility that will allow you to take regular first person and over the shoulder type games and view them in VR. Now let me qualify that <laughs> and say right up front that it's not as good from an immersive point of view uh, or a functional point of view as something built from the ground up. Something built from the ground up for virtual reality is almost always going to look better because spatial geometry, field of view, they're all taken into account. It's designed for uh, head mounted displays, ocular lenses, right? It's not as simple as just saying these are treated like a monitor. I guess that would be the easiest way to convey to somebody that that's what happens because as far as the hardware is concerned, yes, it treats those lenses as if they were another monitor. But it's how those lenses display an image and how, it, how an image is displayed, you know, that make all the magic, right? And FOV or field of view is the most important variable. So a human being has, I believe, 110 degrees field of view, top to bottom, so vertically. Horizontally, I believe it's 120, 130. We are stereoscopic creatures, right? Uh, as opposed to, you know, some insects who have eyeballs literally on the side of their heads. Uh, you know, they don't have quite the stereoscopic vision we do, but they can almost see 360, right? Finding that sweet spot is the most important thing with VR. And then building the geometry from the ground up to work with that is equally as important. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's almost kind of like a lot of the, what they call, and I'll use porn as an example uh, right now, that they're calling it VR porn, and really it's, it's fish lens porn is what I call it. It's horrible, and it's cheap, and it's akin to looking through a lens on an apartment door, right? You know, where the person on the other side, you see their face massive in your field of vision, and then it kind of, you know, everything else is kind of much smaller. Taking something that wasn't designed for VR and just putting on one of these is going to kind of create that effect, right? So what Vorpex does is it steps in and it tries to mediate a compromise. <laughs> That's the easiest way to look at it. So take something like Skyrim, for example. Skyrim uh, and Borderlands are the two games that I tried with Vorpex. Now, I paid $50, 49 Canadian, I believe. So I think it's 39 US to purchase the unit, like to purchase the software, because it opens up a lot of my Steam library. That's the good news. The bad news is, is you have to be pretty tweak orientated, right? As in, you're going to spend an inordinate amount of time tweaking, you know, settings, because a lot of these settings are subjective, right, to individuals, to get it to be just right. So as an example, Skyrim, I tweaked that almost a full hour before I got it to where I was happy with it. Thankfully, some things are made very easy in Skyrim, like field of view. It's tilde, which brings up the console, type FOV, hit the space bar, and then a num numeric value, 120, for example, which I believe is the oft-recommended 
value for Skyrim field of view for VR. Vortex gives you a bunch of intermediary settings, right? So settings like, uh, also like field of view, settings that will trick the geometry being displayed, whether it's, you know, Z or Z buffer versus actual 3D geometry. So sometimes you'll need to use the Z, Z buffer, but it doesn't look as immersive as true kind of spatial 3D geometry, right? Which is the preferred setting. So anyways, there's a bunch of settings. And after about an hour of tweaking, I got Skyrim to what I would say is a happy balance. Better than playing it 2D, but not nearly as immersive as it could be if it was built for the ground up. But what that does do is expand the library available to you, right? So, uh, Borderlands, I wasn't as successful as Skyrim. It's going to require more tweaking because it still doesn't look near as good, right? So, the good news is it'll expand what you can do. The bad news is, is it's going to require patience. So that same patience that you exhibited the last couple of years, waiting for the damn thing to arrive and that you're still using for content to throw at Vorpex, right? To kind of bend it to your will. So um, highly recommend though uh, to anybody who's happy with VR but just doesn't feel there's a lot to do with it, right? If you're one of those people, you're going to get some use out of Vorpex. The other thing I want to draw to people's attention is uh, Portal VR. So this is actually free for anybody who's purchased Portal 2 who happens to have a you know HTC Vive. I'm not positive on the Rift, but for sure HTC Vive. You get what amounts to 10 levels, which sounds okay, but realistically it took me about 23 minutes to beat the content. So had I had to pay for it, um, I would have been pretty choked. The fact that it was free, all right, made it a bit more palatable, right? But um, definitely, definitely lacking in terms of, um, you know, content if it's something you had to pay for. So if it is something you don't qualify, wait for a Steam sale. Because the other thing about Portal VR is that it's very misleading in its advertising. So most Steam games show you a bunch of screenshots, right? A couple videos of gameplay, give you an idea of what the game is about. This one's no different, except for the fact that 99.9% .9 of the screenshots and the video have nothing to do with the gameplay. They show what amounts to, essentially, the game's end credit screen, all right? Because you see, when you beat the game, and there's some gorgeous level design, but they're very sterile environments. They're very white and gray. They show you, on one hand, the immersive capability of Portal. Like, it was always designed with VR in mind, right? But you can tell for this kind of first take at it, at VR, they left the environment purposely kind of sterile uh, to focus more on the puzzle and, you know, the VR aspect of it rather than level design, right? Because when you look at the screenshots, they show a bunch of colorful stuff, right? But that's the end game credits. Because when you beat the game's 10 levels, there's basically an elevator ride that you can take. And it's through a gorgeous complex, but it's not very interactive. You can just move around the elevator and look at the scenery from different vantage points, but the scenery's static and you can't, again, interact with it. Five, ten minutes, maybe, right? There's some foliage on some of those screenshots. You see none of that uh, when you actually play the game. That foliage is strictly from the end game. There's a cut scene, you know, with a fire and with some foliage. That's where those screenshots are from. So keep that in mind. But if it's free, you're going to definitely have some fun with it. Probably more as kind of like a family experience, right? Play the levels in teams because solo... 25 minutes and you're done. There you have it. Hopefully you get some use out of this, guys, especially with Vorpex. Interested in hearing about anyone else's experience with Vorpex because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to be using it heavily to check out other games. So if you have had success with specific games and you have an HTC Vive and Vorpex, I'd love to hear about it in the description. Let me know. All right, guys, till the next video where we'll delve into more detail on Vorbeck specific games.
Cheers.